Why the name Zyrex? How you succeeded that first kick? The importance of playing to empty rooms and the importance of then focusing on resident DJ. Techno DJs in black. They don't use mic too often, do they? Hey guys, welcome back. I go by the name DJ Cave and I'm here with a person who needs absolutely no introduction. Everybody knows him. If you are a DJ for aspiring music producer or a club goer, you would definitely would have heard of DJ Zyrex, good friend of mine, buddy of mine, who I've been working closely since 2017. We've been doing so many workshops at Scratch Lab Academy and we had some such great times, you know, showcasing uh, beautiful new products and, you know, giving value, especially to the community of DJs, aspiring DJs who are now touring DJs all around the city, all around the country and that makes uh, you know, us so proud. I am so proud of you, Zarek. You've reached such a great milestone on Instagram. I've been checking out all your content, and you know, <clears throat> man, how do you do this, man? That's what we're gonna find out. How does Zarek do? Does what he does? And uh, let's get right into it. Okay. So, first man, of all, welcome home. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Zarek. Uh, cheers to you. I cheers. I don't drink alcohol as you I know. I don't drink alcohol yeah. either. So we're drinking water, guys. We just get high off music. That's what we need. Exactly. Right. So now we, I have so many questions to ask you. The first most is like because we have our subscribers right here waiting to know a lot about you. I'm gonna ask and everything linearly. And guys, just so you know, till now I've been doing all my content in Tamil. And this is the first time in a very long time I'm doing an English podcast. So welcome to the podcast. I haven't kept a name for it as of now. I was just thinking about it and I, I told Zyrex, chai with K, and he said, <laughs> you know, we should just go with that. But you know, soon I'm going to come up with one. And, Cave uh, time, tea time. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we go. So tell us, Zyrex, how did this start? And Zyrex, why the name Zyrex? Uh... Actually, the I'll tell you the name first. Xyrex is basically, my name is Eric Xavier. So it's E-R-I-C-X, Xavier. So it's just from X backwards to L. <coughs> gotcha. So it's X, remove the C, X-I-R-E. Oh my God. Which doesn't really make any sense. I did the same thing with my like, name I was like, I put too. another X and I'm like, sounds like a name. Crazy, crazy, <laughs> crazy. Please let me know. So how did you start? So when did all this start? What was the day that just you were like, hey, I wanted to become a DJ? When was the day that you so knew? Around, Let's go back to that. Uh, I think when I was a 10th standard, right. this story I've told only very, very few people who have ever asked me this because it's a long story, but I'm going to tell you like a really short one. So one of my neighbors where I used to live, he was a bouncer for a David Guetta concert in wow. Delhi. He gave me a bouncer t-shirt and I got free entry and... Uh, I was backstage. Free entry for yeah. David get a concert. I had to pay. <laughs> I had to go broke for yeah. that stuff. Yeah. yeah, but I got, I, I was in backstage. Uh, Do you listen? Quarry was opening. Nuclear was opening. And because I was backstage, I was like, oh, like all these people I've seen on TV. I don't know who these people are really. I don't know names. I know faces. And uh, then I was like, I think this side is not the fun side. I think the crowd side is fun. And I went to the crowd and then I forgot to come back. I actually was lost. For like four or five hours, I didn't have a phone. That guy could not find where I was. But luckily, because I had a, I, the whole concert, I was wearing a bouncer T-shirt. By the way, I was in the crowd, right in front, having a great time. And then uh, David Guetta came on. This was 2010, 11. He was number one DJ. Nothing but the beat had just come out, and uh, he did this thing where he just got on top of the console and he just put his hands up. And I don't know what happened. The whole stadium or arena, whatever that venue was. It just lit up just because he put his ha I mean, he was on top of the console and he put his hand up and I'm like, who can have that kind of an energy being a DJ? <clears throat> That's crazy. And then I was like, I think this is something crazy because until then, I probably only knew like his collaboration with Akon, Sexy Chick. Yeah. And I think I got a feeling had just come out, but I didn't really know why he was there around it. I didn't know producer, artist, DJ are like different, different things. Right. Like, for example, Afrojack is also on Titanium, but his name is not there. So how, like, what is all that? And then I started watching stuff on YouTube. And that's when I educated myself with the nightlife culture. And I saw a lot of nuclear. That time, there was no Instagram stories, Facebook videos. People used to put, oh, I went out on a Saturday night. They'll take a video and put it up on YouTube. So I'll watch that YouTube video and get to know, like, what is happening in the nightlife. And then I, oh, this is the fun part. This happened. 
I thought I love electronic music. I want to become a producer. When I came to college, this is Loyola College uh, back in 2014, first day of class, actually literally first day of class, I sit in class, one of your students called Godfrey Vijay. Godfrey Vijay. Yes, I do remember. <laughs> yes. Your student opened Tractor on his <laughs> laptop. I have been, I know what DJing is, but I'm more fascinated with the electronic music production side. Like I want to be like an EDM guy, like headline festivals like Tomorrowland, Ultra, I have, typical that guy. And then this guy opens Tractor and then he loads a track and he starts playing and I'm like, you can do that on your laptop? Like, you, don't you need like expensive gear and stuff? And he's like, uh, oh yeah. And I'm like, where did you learn all this? And he's like, there's a really cool guy called Cave and he has this thing called Scratch Lab. I'm like, oh, there are people teaching this? I didn't know this was a thing. <laughs> so uh, I was like, sounds like a cool guy. But then I was like, I think it's all in my head. I don't think it can become reality. But then he would all like, okay, so if you guys don't know in Chennai, if you're a cave student, it's also like a show off thing that you do. Uh, you know who I am, a cave student, Teddy Ma. Like it's like, a, it's like a thing. Uh, I don't know if you, I, no idea. <laughs> I don't know if you I know, no idea. but I still meet your older DJs who probably are not in the scene oh or in God. the scene or just not mm, active. Okay. They come and tell me I'm a cave student. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Like, He's a friend of mine, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't show off that I'm friends with you and then they're like, he's my teacher. So all that happens. And then I downloaded some other softwares, like all, all the regular virtual DJ, blah, 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 everything. And I used phone apps and uh, weirdly, I recorded a mashup, like a build up transition because in my head, I thought 128 BPM was it. I thought... DJing music was just 120 to 130. I did not know there is music before that. There's music after that. I was that level at that time. And then I was doing like build up to build up transitions and switch up drops in the middle of the build up. And uh, I was doing all of that. And then I was like, okay, I think can do something. Start performing at my college hostel. And then I was like, okay, I think I can do something out of this because I definitely do not know what else I can do in life. So that's how it started. And then... I mean, you so how, were, how, you how, kind of know so everything your first, else. Let us, let, let us know about your first gig. What did you go through that? The first gig? Because, you know, a uh, lot of beginners, you know, when, when they get into, when they, when they meet me, they ask me, like, I'm going to have my first gig. I feel this. I feel that. I feel like it's absolutely normal to be a little anxious, be a little nervous, have that excitement. You know, I mean, you should always be excited for every gig you do. But then... Let's go back into the first gig that you did. Tell me about how that emotions, how so it played funnily, out, how you succeeded that first gig. So funnily, right now when you ask me the first gig, I don't even know which one was the first gig. Okay. Because half the things were like empty tables and chairs. Okay. So like okay. professional first gigs were like, there's no audience only. Uh, but maybe like the first time I had an audience to please, Okay. I was so scared. I was like, please don't get up from your chairs. Please, uh -huh. please just be seated. Because I know what to play and I'm playing a I'm playing a good like a good set, I'm playing a good vibe. But if you get up, then I have the pressure to deal with, I have to make sure you're up on the dance floor and you don't sit down. Got it, yeah. And I was so nervous. I'm playing one song okay. and I'm like, what do I play next? What if they don't like it? What if they stop crazy, dancing? Crazy. And I was like, dude, this is so stressful. <laughs> so everybody usually thinks play one song, hit play and then let the song play and everybody just loves it. No, people don't usually love it. You have to make them love it. And uh, I was a resident DJ for a long time. Resident DJ for but a the, long time. But the problem was uh, I never had an audience or a dance floor to please. Great. So I knew DJing, I knew how to curate a vibe, a set, but I did not know how to make people dance. That's so interesting that the fact that you said resident DJ and you know you also mentioned that you're not able to recollect that one gig that actually you felt like, hey, wait, I'm a DJ, I'm actually made it or making it almost close to that is becoming a reality is because you said you had to do a lot of empty rooms yeah. before you even started to realize you were a DJ. Tell me about the importance, especially this is going to be of so much value to the guys who are watching it right now. The importance of playing to empty rooms and the importance of then focusing on resident DJing as being a crucial part of, you know, our, 
a DJ life, a mm. DJ history for every DJ because now you know everything is so fast paced. Because yeah. you know everybody wants to just quickly finish a, a DJ course and jump on stage, and they want like a million people out there to just vibe with them. They want it fast, and they, I have to tell them they're going to get it, but they're missing out a lot on you know playing to empty rooms. And there is so much that you can learn still from this. And please explain that to us. Uh, Okay, so let me also give you a quick reality check, which happened for me, which I am very, very grateful to. Uh, that happened because I was ever uh, given a chance to be a resident DJ. First of all, when I got the first uh, residency, which is at Bay 146, <laughs> this is damn <laughs> stupid. I've never told this to anybody. Okay. Uh, my, I thought my job was to go to the club and make sure music is on. Like I did not know that I'm supposed to be playing it. Okay. So I I would go I would go to the I would go to the bar. Uh, if Shane sees this, he's gonna be very mad. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would go to the bar, and I'd just chill. DJ Shane, if you're watching, what's up, my man? <laughs> I would be just chilling. So this happened in the first four days. Luckily, I didn't do this for over a week. I would go there. I'm like, music is on, right? Like, there's not a lot of crowd. Like whoever's there, just sipping a drink. And music is on, all good. Yeah. I'm just gonna hang out there and bounce. Um, and then for whatever reason one day I came early and I was like don't these people get bored listening to the same mixtape every day it's just on it's just on loop and I'm like wait what if I'm supposed to change the mixtape <laughs> and I'm like what if they listen to this in the morning and in the afternoon and in the evening and late at night like am I not like don't like I have like more to do with changing the music and then I slowly, slowly uh, thought about it. And I'm like, because nobody gave me a briefing. Like whoever, okay. like, for example, again, awkward conversation with Shane coming up after yes. this. <laughs> probably Shane thought I knew what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and I'm like fresh, <clears throat> like, hey, I want a DJ. Yes. And nobody really told me what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Like as a resident DJ, what I'm supposed to yeah. I, I thought people will, like if they, I thought resident DJ was, somebody will come and ask me to do something. And I'll, that's when I do it. I didn't think people are just there having their drink, eating, whatever. And I'm supposed to play music, guessing what they want. All that, I'm like, yeah. how will I know what music <laughs> they want? That sounded like so alien to me. I never even thought about it. <coughs> then eventually I was like, I think the mixtape is just like when the DJ is not here. And after that, like, I think I'm the one responsible to play that music. And I was like, okay, I think, yeah, that's the job description. Otherwise, Crazy. why don't they give me money just to be here, make sure I would play, but it is always on. And then I was like, okay. Then I started playing. And then I think uh, the most important part of playing empty rooms, which everybody seems to hate and they totally miss the point. I mean, everybody could have different opinions on this. But I feel like it's very important to play for an empty room because that's when you get to practice. Mm -hmm. Like when I was DJing, oh, I practice a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, you, I know how I'm much saying, you I'm, do I'm saying, personally, but I'm saying when you start off DJing, yes. you just want to go out yes. there and hit the play button okay. in front of hundred yeah. people, but you don't think it through. Hundred percent, bro. First song, great. Second song, great. What are you gonna do for three hours? How how do you know what to play for three hours? Yeah. What if you're playing? Uh, you played four banger tracks, and the by the time fifth one you play, people have gone to the smoking zone. What do you do now? Uh, you have created a set for three hours. Now you're lost. I'm like, oh shit, I'm playing this cool song. Come back. You can't say that to them. You have to play something else in that time. And what if they are older people? What if they're younger people? What if they like hip hop? What if yeah. they don't like hip hop? What are you going to do then? So as a resident DJ, you get to practice so much. Plus, it's a very, uh, it's a very difficult task which people uh, think it's easy because they don't really understand the whole picture around it. And uh, I think they don't realize that this is where you don't have risk. I mean, mm. you have risk, but your job is not at stake. Mm. Like if I was booked as a guest DJ to play at the same venue, I would have a lot more expectations. Correct. Like well, well, whoever booked me will have a lot more expectations. Well but if said. I'm a resident DJ. Well said, well said, well put. You know, I feel the same way because you have that room to explore and you know, makes mistakes because that's part of your learning curve, right? Because there is no way we're going to 
I mean, at every given point, we're going to have to suck and then get suck a little less and then get good and then get awesome, right? That's the whole stage. Nobody's going to just start out being awesome on day one. And, you know, I, I completely resonate with the fact that when you said, you know, empty rooms are important because, you know, when, you know, for me, when I've done so many gigs in the past, when I had, like, people didn't turn out for the gig and nobody would come out and I would just take it as an opportunity to just, like, you know, imagine, just, like, play an imaginary set, you know? And then visualize and then actually I would be practicing for the next event somewhere down the line. So, you know, I've, I, for me, it's like, you know, I felt like, I feel like, you know, I can relate to this because we have to make the best out of every opportunity that we get, right? That is so good. So that is so good. And also uh, what happens is we think, I mean, if I just had to practice, I can practice at home, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It's Absolutely. Not the same. It's not you the have same. some crowd that you have 100%. to please. And let's say it's nine o'clock in the night versus 11 o'clock in the night. Yes. You can't do the same thing. It, it can be the same set of people, yes. but you can't be playing the same. I love the music. fact that you said that because you know I notice a lot of people they, when they practice in the room. For for example, when you practice in the room, you can never. I feel you can never recreate that live moment because exactly. there are so many things that nuances that can happen that can go wrong, go right, and every there is no such thing as wrong. Everything is right. Everything is part of that learning curve that you might need if you are a beginner DJ watching this. So it's not about just practicing at home, but also if you get a residency where you feel there is no crowd at all, please use that opportunity because we all have gone through that part of our life to get, get our basics, fundamentals very strong out of that, you know? Also, when we say no crowd, it means no crowd on the dance floor. It doesn't mean no crowd in the venue. No crowd on the dance floor is very different than no crowd at all. No crowd at all is you in your bedroom <clears throat> playing for yourself. But then... There's nothing else happening. Yeah. You're in the most comfortable zone you yeah. can be. But just a simple thing of putting your laptop from the left side to the right side can throw you off your game. Absolutely. And I would do all these things and I would keep please, my laptop please in elaborate different areas. to them because I, I know what you completely mean. Let, let them know what you mean by moving the laptop to the side. So, so if I have, so let's say these are two CDJs. There is a mixer. Laptop would usually be on the left side. Let's say if you are, if you go to Scratch Lab, this is the setup. You keep the laptop on the left side. Now, just the simple laptop going from your left side to the right side can completely throw you off your game, and you'll be like, "Oh my God, I'm so used to having a laptop this side. Now it's suddenly this side. I don't, I can't use my laptop. I can't load the song, and things like these. It happened once because uh, Shane had kept the laptop on the left side, and I'm like. What? No, I want to keep it on the left side. And I mean, you're just starting off. You can't say, you can't tell that to your senior DJ that, hey, I want the left side. It doesn't work that way. And, uh, and I realized how uncomfortable I was with that. And I realized whatever you have learned, you have learned at home. That becomes irrelevant the minute you step in the club because now the real life learning has to wow, start. Yeah. Like okay. learning at the club is what you can do at the club. What you learn at home is only this much. Absolutely, absolutely. What you learn at the club and then how to deal with the... Like for example, if you're mixing a track and somebody comes talks to you, it can again throw you off your game because when you're mixing at home, nobody's talking to you. Speaking of which, I had a student called Vishwa I was talking to on the way when I, was, I told him I was going to meet you. He's a big fan of yours. Vishwa, if you're watching, this is your question. Okay? Okay, so he wanted to know... He had this, he had this thing but. He's good technically, okay? But he has this thing where, is it very important to know English to survive as a resident DJ in India? Okay, so what is your take on this? Uh, so I grew up in Delhi. It's a Tamil family. And when I moved here, I honestly did not know a lot of English. Like the way I can speak in English now would have been very impressive if I was looking back at my school days or something. And I took that opportunity. I do know Tamil. I just don't use it too much. Uh, because Mainly because I wanted to focus on practicing English. I do think uh, people will definitely judge you for the way you speak. And uh, the accent you have. The vocabulary you use. So it's very important. But it's not so important because at the end of the day, you, your job is to play music. Your job is not to talk. As long as you know how to say one, two, three, jump. Put your hands up. I think that's much English if you know. I mean, only from like in terms of being a DJ. Like if you know that much English, if you know how to talk, if you can. I mean, if you're gonna uh, think about socializing and the whole benefits of 
uh, socializing, meeting people, meeting other DJs, meeting promoters, then then yeah, then definitely English is gonna uh, be very important. Exactly. Depending on what region you are in, for example, when I speak to DJs from the north, that time even if they know English, I know English, I speak in Hindi because then you were like, hey, homie, like. Have you ever done how to parkour? I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> I've just done it. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I think after listening to like people like Divine and like that Hindi, uh, both hard, both hard, like stuff like that, yeah. maybe. But I've never said it on the mic okay because yeah, I'm yeah. too scared. <laughs> I did it on New Year's Eve. I was playing a Bollywood set like for four hours with Punjabi, and I was like, you know what? It just wouldn't be fair. Right now, me speaking English, they deserve more. Sab log hapu hatu par karo. And trust me, my Hindi is so pre-kaji, but just, I just, just I was like so confident. Just to throw people off, just to throw people off. Next time, say. Ek do teen jab khud ho. Ek do teen. Like I think that'll that'll be that'll throw everybody off. Crazy. So Anthony has another question. Okay, Anthony, another student of mine, wanted to, has a question. That is, how important is using a mic for a DJ in 2024? And was this a case that you feel uh, five years ago? And I feel like the whole mic use part has increased a lot, but at the same time. Techno DJs, which are wearing black, they don't use mic too often, do they? Uh, I, think, I, I think it's a European thing. I don't, I'm not sure about <coughs> this, but I feel like, like the European culture does not even <coughs> have a mic in the booth. And we do. Uh, do you, what is your I, take I love on the using mic the mic. Yeah, I love using I've, the mic. I've seen you use uh, the mic and, uh, and beautifully. And actually, him, Kana are like two of the people who are, uh, Ivan, Rohit Baka, like a few people who are like amazing when they use the mic. Like I think you, you and Kana just know how to hype the crowd up. Thank you so and much. And Ivan and Rohit just like, you you feel connected because like, let's say you're at the bar, you're doing your own thing, you're eating a burger, you're sipping a drink. Suddenly when you hear your voice, it makes you curious who it is. And it makes you want to look. And the minute you look, and like for example, a performer like you, whose like body language is out there and... Uh, like as a turntablist, I think there's more to physically, uh, you have more to express, not just sonically, yeah. but more physically. Yeah. Like you do a lot of tricks as well. Like you use like all, all just, parts of your still, body to DJ. Just still learning, brother. Just still learning. <laughs> so, so when you do stuff like that and somebody pays attention, then they're hooked on. Then they're like, oh, he's yes. been doing that for the whole night. I want to look. Yes. I want to be invested. So Mike is not... It's not like important, important in a way where somebody's going to have a good time because you use the mic, but they're going to be interested in what you're doing because you use the mic. Correct. So it was a two-part question, Anthony asked. Uh, he also wanted to know, the first part was, do you use a mic and the importance of mic? The second thing he wanted to know is, what do you exactly say on the mic? Because Anthony is actually right now in this final stage of the DJing course and he's preparing a script on what to say to the crowd. Like we all know that, you know, DJs go like, one, put your hands up. Or Take three, two, one, <laughs> and then you know everybody makes some noise. But what, 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 what are the cool things that you would say that that uh, sound really that really works? You you have field tested it and you've gotten a good response that you'd like to share with the upcoming DJs when it comes so, to Mike. Wherever Anthony is, I still <laughs> I'm still there because I feel like DJ vocabulary is very very small. Like, are you ready for this? Are you guys ready to jump or put your hands up or put your freaking hands up or you can. Put your, say, Could I, put your I, fucking hands up or yes. whatever. Awesome. But then what I've kind of, uh, I think research and development is the best <coughs> thing you can do. So I love seeing other DJs. Mm -hmm. I've uh, learned this thing from Kana, uh, wake the fuck up. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> he says yeah, that on yeah, the yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't say it too often, but sometimes <laughs> I play a banger and nobody's there. I'm like, hey, <laughs> wake the fuck up. Yeah. You know, we're, we're out on a Saturday yeah. night. So, uh, I mean, it's influenced from a lot of other people, yeah. but I feel like uh, I've heard, I think <coughs> Beyonce say, mm -hmm. if you know the lyrics to this one, sing along. Nice. Yeah. So that's like a very basic one, but yes. it gets the job Guys done. Guys should take notes on this. Super important. Yeah. If you yeah. know this one, sing along. If yeah. you know the lyrics to this song. Uh, and what what I, because I do like a lot of mashup transitions. Yeah. If I'm going to, if my next song is going to be an Akon song, I'll just tease it and say, do we have any Akon fans in the wow. house? So they're like, why is he saying Akon? <coughs> like it's a Britney Spears track playing. Why is he saying Akon randomly? So I get their attention and then next... Boom. Okay, you're just like... I yeah. get what he's saying. You're, getting so, a set, so, you're setting yeah. up the whole thing. Nice. So nice, when it yeah. hits... So a lot of people... Now they'll get used to be like, okay, Xyrex does this thing where he tells what track is going to come up. But I only say uh -huh. the artist's name. I don't say that. <coughs> so they still have to wonder 
oh Akon but which one got it and if they are an Akon fan then they're like <laughs> 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 so so it's like a whole yes. putting yes. so again miking is all just bringing it all together Amazing. it's not yes. it's 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 one of the elements that will put it all together yes awesome so the there was actually the first question when i started this podcast I, the first question i wanted to go right into hmm. was what everybody's been waiting for oh what is that let's go into mashups <laughs> mashup city <laughs> tell us about mashup city and please tell us about what inspires you on getting these awesome mashups that you do and how do you just like come up with these like every single time how do you, and every time you do it it's just a blockbuster every single time like how what goes beyond the scenes we want to know so first up uh mashup city mashup city is my uh baby in terms of my attempt to try and make a community with indian djs with everybody around uh guys link in the description follow and subscribe and check it out mashup city shout out to kev for the shout out <laughs> uh so mashup city is basically something like dj city club killers but like how you know dj city is not just a record pool <coughs> yeah uh it's a, it's a whole community they do a whole lot of other content and obviously they have their own voice they doing edits but the thing with indians is for example there's a whole lot of uh bollywood that is very uh beautifully produced with urban hip hop sounds uh like rdb has like a lot of hip hop tracks they just came in bollywood but they are hip hop like raghav has so many tracks which are proper hip hop but it's not bollywood so we can play it but there are no intro edits there are yes. no a cappella intro edits exactly. there are no edits to play Correct. it and that is so, so cool that you put it out together for just people to get that yeah so, so i just wanted to make that music amazing. accessible That's for everybody so to good, play so good, so good. indian hip hop indian artists like yeah. divine like like people like us who just yeah. loop it and figure yeah, out a exactly. way to mix but somebody who's starting if you don't have an edit you'll just skip the track so that's the whole uh, vision behind mashup city and like to do content and encourage people to do yeah. more there is so much of value that you're just giving away like you know so you're just taking time out doing these extended tracks putting the best out of it together and just letting people know that they can come and download it and you're sharing it's like basically you're sharing your playlist with them you know you yeah. and and you're doing way more than that and there's nothing you want but you're just doing it because you just want to give to the community and that's so important right so about giving back to the community uh i've i've you know from the very beginning years uh you know we've been collaborating uh by doing a lot of workshops and we've been doing so much on that and even from those days i i still remember you you already were started with mashups way back then and now you're just killing it you know and so so when you start a mashup how does it, where do you where do you start with like like track a track b and then like how do you go about like you just like sitting in front of your deck so you just in bed like visualizing before you get off in the morning so, or how does it happen there's no one process like not every day i wake up and i come up with an idea the same way i would have done uh, any other day a lot of times mashup ideas come to me because i have the tools ready so before stems and all became a thing on dg softwares i would make an edit of a track which would start let's say first eight bars would just be the a cappella and there'll be a, like a sound effects and the full song will start yeah. playing or let's say the outro eight bars of a track will just be a cappella and i would challenge myself to find a track whose instrumental or a beat intro or an instrumental intro will fit on top of this and it'll sound nice that's where uh, it started because i i think i made a mashup i recorded a ma- because i didn't know how to use fl studio or ableton or anything i recorded a mixtape on my dj software right. and uploaded that on youtube okay and that is one of my first mashups and i don't know when it happened because i never checked on it but that that randomly got more than 1 million plays on youtube and i was like uh how did that happen like i don't have a following <laughs> i just put it out there and that's when i got motivated that you do you and just keep putting it out there doesn't matter if you don't have followers or not somebody out there is always got gotcha. you checking it and is there is there a formula that you want to i know uh, i know this, this would be an overrated question but then was it what is the what was it there's, there's too, something like there's just... too much around it but what i can tell you in general is there's no fixed process inspiration can come from anywhere a lot of time inspiration comes from 
Like for example, I think when me and you were hanging out at Q Bar on Saturday night, yeah. uh, when we were talking about making yeah. this happen, uh, uh, the DJ was playing some music and I was like, hey, I think that track might fit well on this track. And I took up my phone. I have a WhatsApp group with just myself, which the group is just called Mashup Ideas. I just put it out there. Mm. If I listen to a word in the club and I'm like, hey, that word comes in that song also. So again, wordplay idea. I have another group with only wordplay so ideas. So you journal. So you, you yeah. do an instant journal. That really yeah. helps you because thoughts are instant, instantaneous. They come in, yeah. but then, you know, it just goes away. A lot, of, a lot of us just be like, you know, oh, I'll remember that later. And then we won't it remember never, it. It never comes to you. There you go. So many times I'm like, what was that cool idea I came ah. up with? I don't remember. So that is the discipline that Zarex, I mean, that you can, you know, you just told them one huge um, value piece right now. I like mean, this is not to do with it. mashups. This is to do with any kind any of... This track would mix mm -hmm. well with this track. This track could do a tone Insane. play with this track. This track could come up with a wordplay transition here. Wow. Could so, be any idea. And this idea hits you anywhere, right? Any time. Most of the times when I'm listening to other DJs. Mm. So it's important for beginner DJs or even... Why am I saying even beginner? No, no, even I a mean, senior DJ yeah. to go out... Yeah, I see spend... Cave hanging out at clubs all the time and we have a great time. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. so, you know, I see a lot of people sometimes they get stuck in a bubble whether, whether they might feel successful or whether they might not feel successful irrespective of that. I think it's a, always a good thing for a DJ on any level to go out and sort of that becomes, you know, inspiration slash research slash constructive Plus having, to fun the, and having fun around it. Yeah, that's it, what we do. Yeah, we we got into this for fun. Yeah, right? it's, it's not like, not like we, a, when you make money playing a yeah. night, great. But like, doesn't mean that you don't have to go out other nights as long as you know what music is playing. Like Correct. I know you love going out for Bollywood nights. Yeah, uh, absolutely, man. You know, <laughs> do my Bollywood steps and all of that. You know, yeah. And yeah, speaking of now, speaking of money. Now, see, this is very important. A lot of lot of whenever I do a podcast, Zarex. Uh, <clears throat> A lot of, when I, when I tell my students I'm going to do a podcast, you have any questions or, you know, if I put a post saying that any, any questions you want me to answer, one of the top things that they ask me, apart from the performance part, of course, uh, is, is, the, is the money part of it. Is the, is the, is the, is the, is a, not, in, not necessarily how much, but then in terms of how to go about it in terms of like um, a, a problem that a beginner would have in his early stage of life is getting hustled and mm. you know even though I say or anybody could just seriously just give them a piece of contract and be like get a contract signed you know, a beginner has gone through stages where he, he'd be like if I show a contract out it would scare people away and they just might not give me the opportunity what are most subtle ways that I can do to sort of work my way at the same time make sure, make sure I get my payments done because in, a, in an industry that can be very formal, and sometimes it can be informal with payments. Oh, that's a, <laughs> you know, I'm putting it out very nicely, you know. That's a very nice way to put cause, it. Because because we have friends who are watching this. See, we we have friends who are DJs. We have friends who are promoters. We have friends. I'm who are sure both of us have a lot of money stuck yes. up somewhere. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> so, <laughs> a moment of I mean, I have an Excel sheet of which, like, oh, like. I think, I think oh, last year it was for like 20,000 pending. Oh my God. And I'm like, crazy. I can buy an auto or something from that money. <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy. Oh my God. So, so, you know, the thing is, in, in short, I, I don't know. I, when people ask me this, um, I just be like, for me, I mean, it, it has, a, you, you have to strike a balance. But then what is your opinion on this, really? So because it's I from think, person to person. I think terms. it's very tricky mm -hmm. uh, because... When anybody starts as a DJ, mm -hmm. you just want opportunities. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. mind doing it for free because you just want to do it for the love of the yeah. art and you just want to get in there, get dirty. Uh, so you don't mind doing it for free, and which is great because you need opportunities to learn. Otherwise, you can't learn. Problem happens when you actually have learned and you have gotten better at it, but then now dynamics are changing and you don't know what you're worth and the other person doesn't want to give you what you're worth. So in a place like that, I would just say, be okay, uh, like be confident with yourself. If you think you've gotten better, then you have gotten better. And if you think you're worth more money, then you are worth more money. And if you can find one person to give you that worth, that's all you need. Absolutely. And now, you know, the thing is, um, social media, you know, it's, it's, 
it, it, it's, it's a, such a blessing. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful tool, I would say, you know, for any performer, you know, and especially our, 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 you know, as yeah. DJs. I mean, you know, something like this, if, if this existed a long time ago, it would have changed the whole game. And now it's finally here yeah. and it's changing people's lives. And, you know, I, I love content creation. I know you are into content creation and you are, you have just, you just, just rocking it as we speak, my brother. Let us know about how important it is because I cannot stress enough because I tell everybody I meet, you know, I feel like social media is so important, isn't it? And, you know, I have, I have like people who are for and against, which is like mind blowing. How can you, how can there even be an against group when everybody should be for because you just cannot win an against. How can somebody uh, be? I don't yeah, get it when people are, people are like, sense. you know, I'm not, I'm not a create. I'm not, a, I'm not a creator. I'm an artist. And I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense. So, but I, no. so I do know a lot of musician friends yeah. who are absolutely against creating video because they only are interested in creating audio. So that I understand. Uh, but even for them, I'm not just saying DJs. I'm saying any kind of performing artist. If you can record a video of you being great at something, why would you not do it? If you, let's say, I perform at whatever top club in Chennai, there are what, 500 people who saw me perform for, let's say, 90 minutes, and I absolutely killed it. <coughs> Out of the 500 people, 400 people probably don't even care that Xyrex is the one DJing. They just, they're just there, having a good time with their friends or whatever. Now, the 100 people who either previously already knew you're performing, or loved your music so much that they now they care about you or now they realize it's you. It's just going to be that much people from that one night of you putting in the effort, you going to the venue, you playing a killer show, making sure you handle all the hurdles that day, put up a great show. But you're going to get only that 100 people as your fans. If you did that same effort on Instagram and if it blew up, you, you can go all over the world you're not limited to that room of 500 people DJing is a job for that room for sure obviously no doubts there but then if you can create content around it doing already what you're doing which you're already great at you just have to record it and put it out in the world you don't have to do anything extra plus the way I do it now is I come up with a content idea and the way I decide if I want to shoot it at home or shoot it in the club and then put it up on Instagram is will I get a great reaction at the gigs that I do? Mm. If, for example, if I'm going to Bangalore, if I do rock there, I, I think it'll work, I get a good reaction. So let me record a video from there. But I'm like, oh, I'm doing hip hop and I don't really have like a Travis Scott fan base in Chennai and I don't have any shows coming up. So let me just record it at home and put it up. I have an idea, it should be out in the world. And if I'm putting it out there, people know Eric is the one with ideas. So he's like an interesting guy. Yeah, so you visualize things. Yeah, you take some time to visualize. You give it. You give it a lot of thought, right? I mean, I, I can see why you have millions of views on Instagram for your videos. And also, please let us know, DJs out there watching, what do they do if they don't have millions of views? Can they? Should they not be on social media or you know, so-called platforms? I'm not mentioning names. Uh, because they don't have millions of views or should, even if they get that so-called thousands of views and stay consistent and would that even be of value for them or no value? Because I, that's I, something I, that I, I've I, been debating. I'll put it this way. Yeah. What would you need to do to get thousand eyes on you in real life? In a club, you can get maximum 300, 400, 500 views on, uh, eyes on you. On Instagram, you record a video, you put it up, you get thousand views. That's already something you wouldn't have been able to do offline. So it's already a win. Million views is just a number. That is just going all the way out there. But even if you get 1,000 views, if you have 100 followers and you get 1,000 views, or if you have 1,000 followers and you get 1,000 views, 1,000 people got their eyes on what you did. That's not <coughs> easy. The number of people that you, like for example, if I step out of my house, go for shopping, like what, 50 people would see me through the day? So if you got thousand views, it's a big deal. Yeah, you're just taking for granted that oh, I'm not getting like million views. Like I, I hear a lot of people like I'm putting so much effort and I'm not blowing up. I'm like, what you're getting already is a big deal. You have to be, you have to um, embrace that what you're already doing. 
you should be grateful for how many people are already seeing it awesome because you, you don't know who you, who is seeing it and who is talking about correct. you correct yeah, absolutely there's people actually looking at you and talking about you so it becomes like a business card like a profile right exactly. it is like a business card profile website even instead of a plus, website plus plus it gives you a purpose like i wake up i'm like oh what do i do oh, i don't have a gig this weekend but if you are doing it for the sake of content you're still coming up with ideas you still have more things to do at the actual gig like if i come up with a mashup i get to perform that mashup in a club and people love it or people hate it but like i i'm still coming up with ideas i'm still coming up with content that's great because you know there is no such thing as mash, um content creation is for extroverts isn't it even introverts can do i that. think content creation is for introverts because wow. i don't have to deal with anyone that's that's <laughs> I don't like talking to random people in the that club. That is such a fresh thought, you know, perspective. So now you have you guys have no excuse not to create content, you know. I don't In fact, I would that. like to say that I uh since I don't drink, I don't know how Cave does it because I have seen Cave very casually just mingle with everybody. I sometimes don't have the motivation to. So every time I'm at a club and I'm like music is not that great today. I think <laughs> I think I'm going to bounce. So for me music has to be either something that is impressive or it has to be something different or it has to be the same thing I do but fresh. If it's not something that I'm I should enjoy it and I should have something to learn. If I'm not enjoying it and and I don't even have anything to learn then I'm like why am I there because it's people filled with people who are drinking having a great time but I can't like in the earlier hours it's okay. <laughs> but you know like how our after parties go till yes, early in the morning yes. later is you can't really feel connection okay. with them you're just like you're too <laughs> i'm too sober so <laughs> and i'm like okay it's time for me to push so in a case like that if i had to put myself out there for people to know who i am i'd rather do it shooting videos at home and put it out on instagram because then i don't 100%. i can just bypass the whole so much meeting people in person and it's so constructive and so it's, it's better than <laughs> if i was an introvert it's better for me sick 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 bro i i love your content you know you've you've inspired a lot of djs in chennai uh, outside of chennai you're inspiring me every day uh, much so love and respect you. to that and also the next question that i like to move on to is the gig life the tour life you know mm. and it is it's something that you know we djs when we start djing is you know we start out in a city lovely hometowns and we learn oh, our skills and you know obviously so grateful to the city that i am in uh zarek zarai we are from chennai zarek chennai is your base city yeah, isn't yeah. it so you know our plus we keep running into each other in yeah I <laughs> <laughs> so 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 we don't start off from here and then you know we will want to branch out and explore cuz india is so beautiful it's so big and there are so many metros and just even places which are not metros which have even a possibility doesn't have to be a nightclub but a possibility where we can throw a party and we will show up there as superheroes to entertain so with that being said zarex um what's your favorite city to party in apart from chennai of course what's your favorite uh, city that's a tough one but i think bangalore is like a pretty safe thing to do hmm? because bangalore has like i could do rock in bangalore i could do hip hop in bangalore i could do r&b in bangalore i could do afro in bangalore yeah i could do all of it <laughs> because in bangalore i have different zones different type of spaces yes i can play i can play chill i can play hard so i think yeah. bangalore that way amazing bangalore he said it. awesome bangalore that's his favorite uh so what we like to go now is people are curious very inquisitive to know about what you carry in your dj bag so oh, a I part of this video is think. looking into taking a sneak peek into zarix's dj bag i haven't guys i haven't given him a heads up so uh, you're in for a rude awakening <laughs> Let's I, go. I th- okay, I because not everything is already in my bag. I'm just going to tell you what it okay. is. Okay. Laptop? Okay, laptop. What laptop do you carry? I use a 14-inch M1 Pro 1TB MacBook Pro. Okay. Uh 1TB I think 16 or 32 GB RAM. Mm-hmm. I mean for audio you don't really need much as long as you're on any one of the mm-hmm. M series or silicon mm-hmm. software uh processors you're good. Okay. Then I have a laptop stand because okay. Which I, which particular brand? I have, do brands matter when it comes uh, to laptop stands? Not really. Just get whatever. Like a lot of people think they have to get a specific one, but just I would say whenever you see a sale, whenever you see a product that you want to buy, you get a good deal. Pick it up. Awesome. Uh, I have a Magma Vector laptop stand. Then I have a pouch which has four USB cables, two for CDJs, one for mixer, one for the additional XP2 that I've started using now. So that. 
I have a camera. I have an Insta360 camera. I have the tripod for that. Oh, now, you, you said a camera, like that is Insta360. Yeah, Insta360 Insta okay. camera. Okay. Because when you're in Chennai, or let's say when, when, when in a familiar venue, somebody will be there to kind of take videos of you. But let's say if I go to Lucknow, I don't have friends there. Quick I can't ask everyone to take Very videos. interesting. I wanted to, I've been wanting to ask you this question, Zarek. Is that you said you have Insta360. Insta um, do you feel the content in that is as good as the one from the regular camera, phone, smartphone camera that we use? Uh, Quality-wise, it's not the same because iPhone and like I have a Samsung S24 Ultra. So quality on those phones is much better. But the problem is that you need a person to do those videos. If you're in a new space, or forget that, you're about to do a routine. You have to ask somebody to shoot it. That person does not know what buttons you're going to push. Insta360 is recording everything. Mm, yeah. You can later, okay, I want to focus on this part, I want to focus on that. Nice. And if somebody reacted, the person taking a video doesn't know who's going to react. True. But Insta360 is recording everything. Mm. So if there's a crazy reaction, you can focus on that, bring it back to yourself, and you that have is a great like, piece of That content. is like carrying your own personal photographer slash yeah. videographer along with it's you. It's an investment <clears throat> worth making. For yes, sure. for, for, for your performance. Yeah. Uh, speaking of performances, you know, um, I've, I've seen this um, a lot. I've seen a lot of um, debate online, offline, about um, performances using sync. Ah, okay. Let's so, go. <laughs> so, 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 see, just to let you guys know, I am pro technology, so I am pro sync. And for me, I, you know, I feel, I feel like, you know, as an artist, you should have the freedom to do whatever you want to and present, you know, your presentation, your cake in a way that you want your ingredients. And no other person should have any say in how you should do things. And that's the way it is that I feel. Uh, Zarex, please give us your take on this. Ha! Huh. So, I think all the older people usually who started off DJing without sync had to really struggle through the whole process. People who played on vinyl, analog vinyl, mm -hmm. people who played on cassettes, yeah. people who played on CDs. You had no BPM. Also, when we when I say sync and when I talk about beat matching, I'm talking about beat matching where you can't see the BPM. Mm. Because that's actually beat matching. When you can't see the BPM and you just nudge it, it, like anybody can do that. But if you don't know the BPMs on both the tracks and you hear it, like how you like how you would do on like a vinyl back in 70s on a turntable, you have to actually change the RPM of the turntable to match the BPM. That I think is what actually beat matching is. That level of beat matching, I don't think anybody needs to do anymore because technology is there. So uh, also, there's so much more to do. Like, playing one song, playing the second song, if you had one option, like one feature on, on your software that already played in the same BPM, now you can worry about, if I want to EQ it differently, do I want to put FX? And the way I DJ, remember how I said I have acapella intros? Yeah. I can't beat match. I have to put the fader up and hit play. So I change a cue point here, I press play, and I also put two faders up. So when the mix happens, it's both the faders up already. So if I mess it up, I nudge it there. I mean, I forced myself to learn beat matching to be able to do this because acapellas and all that is a little tricky sometimes. If your software gets it wrong, then you need, you need to know how to do it. So that way it's very important. But if I had to keep one button on versus if I had to change a BPM slider, I would just keep the button on because on the dance floor, nobody cares. Like they don't know if I even have a slider or if I have a button or if I'm playing out of my phone or if I'm playing a <laughs> recorded set, they don't care. As long as like they get what they want from you. Yeah. Better not, song selection. There are not too many DJs on the dance floor. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and <laughs> even if there are, are, they wouldn't still know. They're not the giving you any money. <laughs> Whatever you do, they'll only have... <laughs> I mean, if they're your friends, then probably oh. nice. But if they're not your friends, whatever the yeah. heck you do, don't, doesn't matter how much you bang it, they'll still have something bad to say. So it doesn't matter. Let yeah. them say whatever. Absolutely. So, you know, guys, uh, this is the most fun part of the video we're going to go into right now. Zyrex has just explained his whole mashup process. And I know you guys uh, have been listening to what he's saying, but I know you've also been thinking if you were to check it out live, 
that would be even awesome. So right now we're gonna go in, going into a small clip of him performing live. Check this out right now. I'm sure you guys know this Tamil banger. Let's make this into an I'm a piano banger. Welcome to my bedroom setup. I'm guessing you've already seen this on my Instagram before. But let me give you a quick rundown of how this all comes together. There is a ring light here which lights me up. But for the walls behind me, there are RGB floodlights that kind of wash out the walls into a blue. And I have these strip lights which kind of give you that effect of this light blending into the blue. So it gives you that gradient. That is something that I really like. So I have it in all my videos and a really easy way to shoot all of this and have very less editing work is getting all of it right while shooting. So you're not worried about how to get it right in editing or color correcting or anything else. Uh, getting to recording videos with great audio. I have this table. Uh, it's big enough to keep, uh, let's say like the FLX4 and a laptop at the same time. So the way to do that is you take your laptop, connect it to your controller, connect speakers to your controller, have headphones so you can monitor them very, very well. And at the time you record your video, make sure you're also recording a mixtape on your DJ software. So you have a high quality audio recording happening at the same time. Your phone is recording uh, from your house speakers. So your phone has a microphone that records what's happening live but you get a clean recording on your laptop and you can take this recording and replace the audio file on your phone's recording later. And uh, a lot of people ask me what phone am I using because uh, they sometimes seem to be impressed and they think that it's a professional camera. It's not actually a professional camera. It's the lighting which gives you that professional feel. I use a Samsung S24 Ultra. I'm an Android guy, so I use this, uh, but I'm guessing any iPhone or Actually, anything around a 30-40k range of a phone will have a great camera. So don't spend too much on your phone just to get a great camera. Spend on lighting. Like for example, this ring light is about 4k. I have a stand. I have a tripod. Those are like about 1000 rupees, 2000 rupees each. Then these lights that I use are like 250 rupees each. So it's really affordable to put it all together. Don't focus on the camera too much. Focus on the lighting. Focus on the audio. That's more important. All right, guys, we are back again to the podcast. I hope you guys had an amazing wow experience. Um, Zyrex's performance. Zyrex, how do you do that, man? That is insane. You do, do you do that every single time? That In is my just, sense, I like to do yes, it. Yes, yes. I mean, I mean, that's so cool because, see, I, I, you know, I understand that, you know, playing tracks and keeping the, the foundation very important. But at the same time, you know, I know you do this for yourself because you want to entertain yourself from the very beginning. Because I know to do that, it's like, whoa, did you see that? I just did this so awesome. And it sets you apart, yeah. like from the whole other lot of DJs out there who are just playing tracks one after the other. I mean, no disrespect, absolute respect to that. That is the most important thing, just to do the basic stuff, yes. But then sometimes we want to do more and we yeah. want to have our own style. And that is your style, bro. That is your style. Like, you know, now, you know, like, you know, there's a saying like, you, you close my eyes, you know, and then you take me to a club, I can tell when you're playing. Yeah. So that's, sure. that's, 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 like a, like a, that's an awesome thing. And you know what, guys, that's what we need to aim to do as an artist, as a DJ. I mean, one thing, I mean, it's, it's good to, once you get there, you're a successful DJ, but there are many successful DJs. The point is, the bigger picture is to have your own identity and then people know who you are, like truly, and you do the things, the things that you do, only you do it the best. I think one thing that I'd like to add is uh, you have to kind of be okay redefining your job as a DJ. Like a lot of people think, like for example, when I started, I thought music is supposed to be on. Like I started there and now I'm like, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. What I think the ground rule that you should think about is they can listen to the same track 
at home they can listen to the same track at the gym they can listen to the same track at the car how is it different when they listen to the same track they love that they have been hearing for 10 15 years at the club how do you bring that experience in if i can do that with a mashup because when you play back to back you're like ah okay this song oh now okay this song they're having a great time they're not having it's not like they're not having fun but when you twist the way the same song plays or you do like a word play you do like a tone play or like you scratch it in it's it's just a very small difference the song is just still going to play but the way it comes in it can create a very special moment that they're going to remember for their life correct that moment that creating the moment i think is what djing is all about correct. absolutely absolutely brother couldn't agree more with that now you right now you've taken mashups to a level that is like like you know this is this is this is how you really do it okay what's next with the mashups i know you're thinking as an artist mm. i know already know that you're probably thinking okay i've done it now how do i outdo myself right you you be in a place where i need to change it more because you just be just speaking about redefining so the moment you said it i'm like what could you possibly be thinking about re- reworking redesigning reinventing I have, I have, I have so let many... us know about that <laughs> give us a scoop on that i have so many ideas but i don't know if technology has come around it yet like for example if i'm let's say you were scratching imagine if lights were sinking the way you were cutting a crossfader okay so you want to have a, some kind of a technology a device which yeah, sort of like works visual the, lights visual. Okay. Don't we triggered. have something in Pioneer that does that? Like some, but it must be some expensive console. <laughs> Don't know something. No, but I'm saying like each thing that you do, mm-hmm. you can automate a lot of it. I think they have a DMX controller which does a lot of it. Right. But it will a song will play and the lights will be mapped to the build up to the drop. But I'm saying something in terms of I press a cue point or if I do some finger drumming and there's like a light show around it already mapped. So I don't have to do it for each song. I do anything. I cut the low lights nice, change nice. i put echo lights change nice. i'm saying stuff like that to really do that make awesome. people feel what you're doing wow and zarex uh, uh, what about visuals what's your opinion on visuals uh, and do you plan on uh, doing in that uh, direction as well in, uh, i would in love to but the problem is i so let's say my humps i like or let's say temperature or like any of the club bangers I have like some seven edits mm-hmm. of each track. Mm-hmm. Like one would be original to Afro remix, one would be original to Bele Funk, one right. would be original to Tech House, yeah. or the other way around. Like right. if I want to go from Tech House to original, so sometimes you can't put effects before something happens. Like for example, you put an effect, you put a fader down. You can't put an effect before you put the fader up. So technology is little limited like that. So you have to do all those things in edits. So because I make so many audio edits for each banger track now I'm making video edits for each thing might be too much so that's why I don't already do it but if there was a way that I can take an original video map all the six edits to that wow. and it automatically knows insane, insane. like if and AI if AI came up with something that it already knows what video to put for each song crazy I will be a video guy and then plus you would have this light things that you have mapped which you already talked about then it's about. the experience coming together that's yeah. insane Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Whoa. somebody's working on it. Crazy! I just have another idea to add on. How about a dance floor that's mapped with the lights as well? With that, everything. Room? I'm saying oh, everything. Insane. <laughs> everything mapped everywhere. Yo, man, you just like how about a Zayas club? How about like a a club just 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 yeah. If I'm fully, if I'm alive to the see that day, I'll be and, I'll be very happy. Hey, man, we just I just went into some space, <laughs> and I'm just humming water, you guys. Just, <laughs> seriously, guys, just nothing, you know. <laughs> yeah, water, plain water. <laughs> Just chilled water. <laughs> chilled water. Sorry. So now speaking of you know all this uh stuff that you're doing mashups and everything. Have you ever had this moment when you're doing this mashup and this person comes along and says like, "Can I have this song request?" How do you deal with song requests, Zyrex? Well, depends if I am a guest DJ or a resident DJ. If I'm a guest DJ, I have another resident DJ to do the dirty work. So I'll be like, "Hey, <laughs> take care of it but uh, if i'm a resident dj then i actually use it as an opportunity to talk to the person and see what are they into because sometimes if they are asking for a great song and sometimes they are asking for a song which is something that i don't know it can be an opportunity for me to learn some great music and if somebody is taking the effort this is what i want everybody to remember if somebody is taking the effort of walking up to the dj and requesting a song they must really really love it mm. if they really love it 
why would you not just play it for them? It's okay, just give it to them. That's such a nice perspective. So if if you if you can just like for example, you know how like everybody comes in and annoys us. Can you wish my friend happy birthday? It takes us two seconds. We get really annoyed, but when we do it, it's a memory for them. They're probably gonna remember it for weeks, months, years, and they're gonna be like, remember that time we celebrated your birthday? It was such a great night, and you made it happen. So. Like I, a lot of times look at from like I take myself out of the equation and I'm like, hey, look at the bigger picture. They came out, they're having a great night. So yeah. if they ask for a song and if I can play it, but like again, like if they ask for Chikni Chameli in the middle of a, like a hip hop set, I'm gonna be like, no, sorry. Uh, and depends if I say sorry or something else, uh, depending on <laughs> what is that something else. <laughs> no, no, no. You not, can tell us <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing rude. <laughs> but I'm just like, hey, like, like. Think about what you're asking. You know, be a little more mindful about what you're gonna yeah. ask the DJ yeah. to play. So again, depends. Some people you just can't expect them to think the way you think. Uh, but a lot of people who do know music, like if you grew up listening to rock, retro, hip hop, R and B, I think most of those people know music. So they know what goes with what. So even before walking up to you, they'll kind of figure out what they want to say. One thing you should never do is. Don't go to go to the DJ and like do small talk. Like we are busy people. Absolutely. We are busy Absolutely. behind the console. Don't do small yeah. talk with us. I've seen you performing, and one thing I notice, Zarex, is that you know you always treat it uh, uh, in a way where it's never again. It's never like I'm the DJ, you're the crowd. It's never us versus them, me versus you. Yeah. But it's always been like welcome to my party. You're like it's yeah. so organic. It's like it is we. It's like how you would treat somebody when somebody walks into your house. And asks you like, "Hey, can you play a song?" And just the same way you would treat them the same way too. It's just you're so welcoming in that way, and it's like it's like one. You know, I find this like invisible loop of like one you and the crowd. So it's it's just it's a very nice uniform vibe that you've already set. You've set you've set a tone in your parties, you know. And that's so that's this is that's the thing that I notice uh, with a lot of pro DJs is that that's the one distinction that sets. You know the amateurs from the pros. I mean, apart from the fact that you know, pros they say pros charge and amateurs don't charge. But you know, I'm just want to say that there is a connection, there is an engagement, there is there is a bond with the crowd, even though they're meeting you for the very first time in that club. That's actually a very beautiful thing that I think people who are starting off as DJs don't probably think about that you are gonna go to a room. Full of strangers, and you're gonna party with them, and they're gonna party with you, and you don't care about where they're from. You are not being racist. You are not being casteist. You're not doing anything. You're just having a great time. If somebody had a bad day, you're playing music. They're having a great time. You're having a great time. Everybody's having a great time. That's it's like the best thing ever. It's like music connects us. You know? Yeah. It's, it's like that's, that's. So why would you like? For example, if I don't like somebody personally. <laughs> I don't like them personally, so I wouldn't call them to my house or hang out with them. But if they're at a club and if they like the same music I like, I'm going to be having a great time. Like even if they're standing next to me, I'll be jumping with them. Singing along, jumping around, doing whatever. Because I'm having a great time, they're having a great time. I don't care if you have any personal issues. So insane. that way I think clubs insane. are insane. Job perfect. Wow, insane. So this is like this concept of you know emotional state transference. I've, see, I've heard like a lot of NLP speakers talk about this and you know... Um, you know, prodigious, you know, like you have this thing where you give that emotional state. Like when you're happy, they feel that happiness from you. It's like coming out of the speakers or just shout radiating. Out, shout out to DJ Ivan because he does an absolutely fantastic mm. job at this. And uh, so I have like a few uh, unofficial mentor figures in my life. Like I know like now we are like friends of sorts. But uh, like before K was not... I mean, not like that he was not approachable to me, but I wouldn't think that he was approachable because I was just starting. No, no, I'm not, before even I knew you, I'm saying. So at that time, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't know who to ask these questions, who to learn from. So uh, I think it's amazing to have these mentor figures and kind of pick up their qualities, like how you are very expressive physically, like you move around in the console, like... Like, Kay would get on top of the console. I've never got on top of the console. He gets on top of the console. I'm like, what if it shakes? What if some cable comes out? Has it ever happened? <laughs> but I'm like, I'm super scared. I'm like, oh, what if like I'm jumping and I trip and I fell and fall on the console? I'm just like, not going to do it. But uh, like, there are so many great things. Like, 
can i is very uh, just super chill with how he uses the mic he's just making uh, he's just interacting with people he's just talking about hey there's a new banger in town i mean new banger on charts listen to this fresh new music so and you i think cave is like cave doesn't need a hype man he, he is his own hype <laughs> man like if i could like if i ever became uh, a curator where i had the liberty to book myself and cave i'll be like i don't even care if he brings his turn tables or not he just just one mic i'll play the oh, music okay. just let him do the hyping it's going to be a lit party <laughs> does i don't even have to be there as a dj k just needs to be there on the mic so like there are some people who are just that good at the mic so but i but i just want to just just let all the dj's know if you had a bad day and if you're going to like be like very serious on the console and doesn't matter what track you're playing if that's how your face is people are not going to vibe with you they're not going to feel connected to you but if you're like just smiling and they had a bad day you don't care about them I mean, you care about them, but they had a bad day. You don't care about what happened in their day, but you are having a good time. Uh, the music, maybe the alcohol. I don't know. I don't really know that. Speaking of which, Zayd, do you have any warm-up rituals before you go on a gig? Is, say, in case, say, supposing, you know, sometimes we we cannot always control our emotions and we can't always be in the best state. But obviously, yes, uh, music itself is enough, more than enough, obviously. But I'm just saying, do you have a pre so, any kind of a pre-gig ritual? I've actually never thought about this but apparently I do have a ritual. Oh. Uh So I do this thing where I record all my uh sets mm-hmm. as like for example I'm <laughs> playing at Secret Story tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh I want to so what I would do a day before is listen to my previous set from Secret Story right. to kind of remind myself what I played. Right. And uh usually the way to the venue I'll be listening to the, my previous set ah. there. So it kind of gives me a flashback of oh i played all this music and this worked and this did not really work and i forgot to do do, do this mashup so i kind of refresh my mind and no matter what happened through the day if i had a shitty day i'm just because i'm thinking about the gig now i've forgotten everything else bro, now i'm only is, thinking about the gig bro that is insane you just like you know that's like you know one stone two mangoes it's like i mean i actually didn't it's like think, that it was like that. like because you know like how tiring it gets when we like travel yeah, here and yeah. there and then uh but also like whenever we are at the console we are not tired but then five five minutes after the performance we are again tired like so i'm like i i don't know how that happens i know i don't know how my body knows that it's time to have fun so it forgets that it's tired but listening to a mixtape kind of lets me relive like what i did that day yeah. plus let's me like oh i forgot to do this routine oh i think i can do this routine oh i didn't have this mashup at that time now i have this mashup i can fit it here Crazy. so all that thing happens and i'm already in the zone to zone. perform oh, yeah. so when i walk in i'm already set i'm like let's in go in zone in state and he that's his that's i that's his yeah I've, a lot of friends have told me i'm like a little uh, narcissistic because of this like sp tells me okay. who the <laughs> fuck listens to their own big stuff you're so self obsessed i'm like Send me I'm, your mixtapes. I listen to yours. I, I think I think we, you know, you know, to to be successful, you know, especially like how awesome you're doing, we need to be a little self obsessed. We need yeah. to be, we need to love ourselves, so you know, to an extent that you know, we need to be our uh, biggest cheerleaders and our fans, right? So that's that's how I find that a positive thing, you know, and that's very, so good. Very much. And you know, you know, I have a few more questions, and uh, before we. close this beautiful podcast it's been such an By amazing way, time he after this we're going to have excited to have yeah child. absolutely so guys uh two more questions which is scratch lab community and some of my dj friends wanted to ask is about music management and playlist tips and tricks who this can be a 3 hour podcast on its own uh because i love talking about this anybody who's ever spoken to me about this <laughs> would be like that's a bad question to ask when you're <laughs> trying to close a podcast with eric uh Okay, I'm not going to tell you a lot of things because uh music management is not everybody's thing. I think I am that like I think you are also like you carry stuff in pouches like you have one bag but then you have a pouch inside a bag yes. and then a separate pouch for something else. Yes. That's what I do in my music management. Okay. So usually somebody would have one hip hop playlist, one commercial playlist, all the hip hop there. I have eight playlists for just hip hop in the 70 bpm range Whoa. 70 to 80 then i have because it's like but will it get confusing how does it work tell me uh 
So one is with all 70 BPM stuff. 70 BPM, 140, all of it. Uh, one will have only new school, one will have only old school. One would have uh, tracks like Yummy Yummy, which are hip hop beat, but pop. Uh, one would have drill, one would have drill, but Indian artists. One would have uh, hip hop, but drill edits. So like, if I'm, if I know one zone is working, I can stick to that playlist and I can play more of that zone. Like for example, if I play crank that, now I'm like, oh, maybe kiss me through the phone will work. But how long will you keep thinking of what you need to play? If your music is already sorted, then all you need to do is just take a look at your playlist and you know, oh, if this is working, this will also work. If this is working, this will also work. All you have to do is BPM, keys, I'm, I follow key like a whole lot. So it can work against you sometimes because then you think that you need to limit yourself only playing songs that match in the key. Uh, because sometimes what you feel is right is usually right. Technology can limit you sometimes. Uh, but then again, because this music is sorted not, it's sorted by BPM and by uh, the way it sounds. So my old hip hop playlist will not necessarily have any uh, just old music. It, it could also have a track which came out last year, but sounds old. Like it doesn't need to be an old track to be in the old playlist. It, it just sounds it. old to be in the old playlist. Got it. So it's like that. For example, uh, Blinding Lights has a retro pop mm -hmm. uh, production, okay. which will go similarly how Take On You would go, right? Yeah. So now they are in the same zone, but they are not, this is a different era, this is a different era, but they mix well together. So they'll be in the same playlist or they'll be in two playlists which are adjacent. Actually, the camera that I was recording on stopped recording and I'm just going to stitch it together back again. And we were talking about our... I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Zarex, I have a important question to ask you uh, to end our uh, beautiful podcast. That is troubleshooting like just as i was speaking you see this my <laughs> camera switched off uh, doing yep. a podcast because yep. i don't think i did enough troubleshooting because the this is, i would say this is the first proper podcast i'm doing right now and i'm happy it's with you i'm Asif. super glad i'm part <laughs> and of thank me. you for helping out helping me set these cameras right now guys this is the first time i'm doing it on this scale just a lot of things happening here you won't be able to see it's off screen um but I'm going to end this with one more question, and that's going to be troubleshooting. Uh, what do you do when things shut down when you don't want them to shut down? And has uh. things like this ever happened to you? Have your, uh, for me, it's happened. Uh, my, my laptops died. My turntables stopped working. <laughs> my needles stopped working. My software is messed up. I have a lot of crazy stuff. But what comes to your mind when, what would be the most what was your most scariest or anything that you want to share? So luckily, I don't think laptop to, show, is... to let us know that you are human. Oh, uh, oh! by the way, before troubleshooting, uh, I'm not scared of making mistakes. Like, if something happens and audibly it's going off, mm -hmm. I'm very happy because then people know I'm doing it for real. Right. So don't be too scared. Just have fun in the process. Uh, but yeah, if something shuts down, then you can't have anything to play music on. Uh, luckily, laptop has never crashed. My softwares have never crashed. Just on Saturday when I was playing at Cuba, I think my uh, USB hub died mid-gig. Oh my God. Uh, and funnily, I had four USB hubs. It's just that people borrowed it and I was like, hey, it never dies. I never took it back. But I had four. So in case one dies, I pull out another one. Right. But just happened that I had given all of them okay. away. Uh, but yeah, all the cheaper stuff, uh, cheaper stuff as in USB cables, uh, USB hubs, mm -hmm. uh, headphones, mm -hmm. uh, connectors or uh, chargers if you can. I know it's too much to carry. I remember Skip has like a like a Santa Claus yeah, bag yeah. where he has extras of everything. I know people who carry tour with tour laptops. Two laptops. Yeah, like I, I think. Somebody recently was telling me they carry like two controllers. I think Sean also carries yeah, two yeah, controllers. Yeah, two laptops. Yeah, yeah, two laptops, two controllers, two pen drives, two headphones. I went through that phase because when my laptop crashed, I was carrying two laptops for gigs. 
but that just lasted for six months and then I just got back to my confidence. And yeah, so like, uh, for laptop DJs, it's a little hard because now I've shifted to XP2. Okay. So now I have to carry another laptop stand for the XP2 and wow. I'm like, oh, wish I could just do everything on the pen drives. If pen drives can do stems, I'm shifting Crazy. to pen drives. The irony is that Technology is supposed to limit space, but then with technology, we have more. I think because gear. people like us we just want to use the technology, do more, and then we need more controllers, more. and then we need more stands, so, more so, cables. So it's, it doesn't work like as if it's it's never a minimalistic approach, but more of a maximalist approach. Yeah, for like us. for example, now I have to charge my, uh, I have to charge my watch, I have to right. charge my phone, I have right. to charge my camera, I have to charge the light that I use to shoot on the camera, I have to shot my, I have to charge my laptop, and then. Charge earphones when you're traveling. Oh, damn. So, like, technology is good, but then the more number of elements that get added, the more chances of things going south. But what I would suggest is, the reason why I have XP2 in my setup, even though I can have keyboard shortcuts to do the same, which I also do, by the way, is uh, uh, when you turn up at a gig, like DJs like us, we are very, uh, very much live performers. But a lot of other DJs just stick to queue, play, no beat jump, uh, maybe loop, but uh, no hot cues, yes. no beat jump. So if the beat jump button is not working, if the hot cues are not working, I think we will not know until we are mid routine and then we're like, oh shit, this is not working. And now like you can't Correct. do that routine Correct. anymore. You can still DJ uh, <coughs> because queue play will always be working. The DJ who's playing before you will always use queue and play. Uh, headphones will obviously be working. Uh, but one simple thing like do you, uh, you know master Q on uh, sorry I don't know why this is happening we'll just pause this here one what is no, we'll keep on? it on the video <laughs> <laughs> that's like a lot of hello. emotion hello <laughs> that's like an alarm going on <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> So, so like when you're, <laughs> so stuff like this usually doesn't happen. But that uh, was troubleshooting right there. Is, this, is, this is crazy. If it doesn't My work. camera dies, and then his watch acts weird. See, things can go um, yeah. wrong. The, and, and this is a controlled environment. And in a controlled environment, you can even do your sound checks. But then it doesn't guarantee. Anything but always to somebody has a drink; they are ready to spill over you. Yeah. <laughs> or your laptop, or your CDJs, so or all, your turntables. See, in the end, I think you know, Zarex. I think we just have to maintain our composure and yeah. look for the best and be, do our best. Be and ready with the plan B. Yeah. Be ready with the backup. Do your best and leave it. Leave the rest to God, man. You know that's all we got to say, Zarex. Any last uh, message that you would like to? talk to our subscribers, the viewers. If you're watching this video for the first time, much love and support for checking it out. Please do like, share and subscribe. DJ Zarex, DJ Cave. Zarex, what do you want to say? Uh, I, would, uh, I would love to say that DJing is one of those jobs where it can be very, very challenging mentally. So make sure whatever you're doing, don't ever forget to take care of yourself. Make sure whatever you're doing, you are liking it. Don't do it because something is trending and you want to be on the trend. Stick to what you like. If you enjoy it and it happens to be trending, go for it. But don't force yourself to do something that is not your thing just for the sake of fitting in. Amazing. This has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for staying throughout the video and watching till the end. I hope this podcast gives you a lot of insight into Xyrex's performance and his way of being him as an artist, him as a DJ, and him as a human being. And I hope you guys would have um, liked whatever you saw. And if you have any more additional questions, please comment down in the comment section below. Zarex and I would come back and answer your questions and chat with you and clear further doubts that you have or anything that you have in your mind. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Zarex. Thank you so much for having me, Kate. Thank you so much for coming over and shooting this. Much pleasure, much love, brother. <laughs> Guys, we gotta go. Peace!